Greetings. Welcome to the Technical Working Parties Preparatory Workshop. And this takes the form of a webinar today. We are looking into data processing techniques in the US examination. This is the third of a series of webinars that have been held this week. And the objective of the webinars is to enable some delegates to participate more actively in the technical working parties meeting. During this webinar, we will start with an introduction to document TGP-8 and then look into the combined over years criterion, the Gaia methodology, and also how to integrate statistical methods and techniques into software. These presentations will be followed by a panel discussion. And here we have our guest experts from Kenya and Japan. And finally, we'll have a session on questions and answers. If you would like to already place your questions, please use the question box in the GoToWebinar control. Now I'd like to pass the floor on to my colleague, Mr. Manabu Suzuki. Manabu, you have the floor, please. Hello, good morning and good afternoon and a good evening. Um, my name is Manabu Suzuki, and I, today I'd like to um, the, introduce the, the document TGP-8 uh, trial design and techniques used in the examination of the US. And the TGP uh, document uh, provides guidance on trial design and the data analysis and provide information on certain techniques used for the examination of DUS. TGP-8 can be um, divided into uh, two parts, uh, DUS trial design and data analysis. On DUS trial design part, includes, the, for example, test design, test prices, condition for uh, conducting examination. The crop-specific guidance for the conducting examination is provided in the test guidelines we are available, including appropriate number of growing cycle. TGP-8 also provides guidance on some appropriate statistics procedure for DS assessment and includes keys for the choice of the method in relation to the data analysis. To assess the distinctness for the variety on the base of the quantitative characteristics, one of the most possible ways of the establishment minimum distance is the method known as the combined over years distinctness. And the Gaia methodology is mainly used for identifying those varieties in the variety collection, which can be excluded from the selection of a second and subsequent growing cycles because they are distinct in frost from all the uh, candidate varieties. And in relation to the examination of the uniformity, the comparison between the candidate variety and the comparative variety is carried out on the basis of standard deviations. And UPO has uh, proposed several satisfied uh, statistics method. One of is the uh, CoU method, which takes into account the variety uh, between the years. In general, the DUS examination is mainly based on the growing trial. The TGP-8 provides the guidance on the principle applied for the growing trials. It provides general information on growing trial organization for DUS examination, including guidance concerning the replicated and randomized trial design. Replicated paths are useful when more than a single record path variety is required for the assessment of distinctness. The data from a group of plants can be used to uh, calculate a variety mean 
or the individual front data can be used for a statics analysis. The example here provides when we know that there are the certain sources of the variation, like their uh, fertility gradient, we may take that information into account by making so-called blocks. With assessment gradients, we may choose either two blocks each uh, consistent one law, or you may choose four blocks, two blocks in two boxes in each row with four uh, brands. And the, it is very important uh, that the data are correct. Uh, that is without mistake. In order to avoid uh, mistakes in the, the interpretation of the result, the data should already be inspected so that the data can be logically consistent and not conflicting with the prior information about ranges likely to arise the variation characteristics. This uh, graphic plot is used to uh, validate the quality of the data with so-called box plot, which is an efficient way to get an overview of a quantitative data. In this case, data of Leaf, uh, leaf, leaf reference are used for the experiment uh, right out the three box of the 26 plot with 20 plants, uh, 20 plants per uh, plot. Within each block, 26 different or ripe varieties were randomly assigned to each plot. In relation to the statistics and uh, methods, they are mostly commonly used for the assessment of the distinctness of measurement quantity characteristics for the cross-pollinated variety when the data from the growing trial or variety are subject to variation, which may occur, uh, for example, from plant to plant, from plot to plot, and from year and year. But a single growing cycle or more than single growing cycle is needed to provide assurance that the difference observed between the variety are sufficient consistent will depend on the level of amount variation from these different sources that are observed in the in a species. This uh, table uh, provides summary of a selection method for uh, examines distinctness. It contains a discussion of the factors, influence the choice of method, and discussion of the static uh, tests, and factors influencing the deception. There are three series of data analysis methods that can be used for assessing distinctness in growing the uh, trial, other than COIT, for example, two by one percent. Uh, she square test and so on. We also have useful flowchart to assist GS experts to select methods for examination of the distinctness by the requirement for statistical methods for distinctness ass assessment. There are requirements, for example, type of expression, interval measurements and cost counts and whether at least two years cycle is required. Data and data analysis also uh, needs determination of the crop dependent uh, details such as sample size and acceptable number of offsites. In addition to the number of plants uh, specified, number of plants to be examined should at least allow the possibility of type of type plants within the tolerant number to be excluded from the observation. In this case, this table and figures gives uh, information with sem uh, sample size 
an acceptable number of offsite, which is uh, the mostly used uh, methodology and uh, figures in relation to examination of the uniformity in UFO. That's three image and analysis. The image analysis is used uh, for measurement and to uh, uh, automate the assessment, uh, the, the assessment of the characteristics at, uh, at risk partially. It requires good and uh, precise uh, definition of the characteristics, computerizing using existing or in-house software, a good presentation, uh, a preparation of sample and careful uh, calibration. Image analysis offers a possibility to store information. Image can be re recorded and can be uh, analyzed later on uh, in order to avoid peaks of the workload. And they can be uh, retrieved at a later stage to uh, compare variety, for example, in case of that. So uh, that is my presentation. Thank you for listening. And brought you back to uh, the Thank you. Thank you, Manabu. Now we continue with the combine over ES criteria to be introduced by Miss Sally Watson. Please, Sally, you have the floor. Um, good morning. Um, my name is Sally Watson. I work for the Agri Food and Biosciences Institute here in the UK. And uh, my talk to you this morning is on, I'm giving you a presentation of an overview of the combined over years distinctness and combined over years uniformity criteria, otherwise known as COID and COIU. And uh, we use COID and COIU for cross-pollinated crops and for some self-pollinated crops. Uh, we use them when we have to use statistics in order to test distinctness and uniformity. In other words, when we can't use notes or um, when we can't use off types. And we use them with quantitative characteristics. If you want to know more about quantitative characteristics, see TG1. There we go. Now, COID and COIU fit into the, oh dear, I'm, I'm just going to page up. I've gone a page too far. There we go. Uh, COID and COIU fit into the DUS testing process. In essence, we have candidates and reference collection of uh, comparable varieties. We design a trial, we plant the trial, we collect the data, and we analyze it and we use COID and COIU and we make dis distinctness and uniformity decisions on those candidates. And as a consequence, we either reject varieties or we add the candidates to the reference collection and then we move on with the next trial and so on. And so it's a cycle of data and COID and COIU are in there for the decision making. Now, COID and COIU need data. They need data on every plant and variety and replicate in either two years or as we do in, with herbage in the UK, three years or otherwise independent growing cycles. Now, we use that data in order to calculate two things. We calculate for each year, for those varieties and the diagram here we have the comparable varieties taken from the reference collection and the candidate varieties we calculate in a year for a characteristic a mean which is the mean of all the plants on the replicate plots for the variety in that year and we also calculate a standard deviation now that standard deviation is the average of the standard deviations in the different replicates of that variety in that year. So it's an average standard deviation uh, for the year. And we have it for one year and we have it for other years as well. 
and uh, uh, the standard deviation is used just in the COI U analysis, and the means are used both for the COI D and the COI U analysis. And uh, we use these means and standard deviations to do our distinctness and uniformity uh, analyses. Now, in order for a candidate to be distinct, it must be different in, from every other variety in trial in at least one characteristic. So for this, for distinctness, we are looking at differences in characteristic means between varieties. Now, so that's distinctness. For uniformity, a candidate has to be uniform in every single characteristic. So for this, we assess a candidate's uniformity and we compare that with the uniformity of the comparable varieties. So here we're comparing uniform uniformities. Now, in practice, we look at Koi D and Koi U on all characteristics, but for my presentation this morning, I'm only considering one characteristic. And also, if you want more information on Koi D and Koi U, as Manabu has said, it's in TGP8. There is detail there. So, if we look at Koi D, which is for testing distinctness, I have some data here. It is the crop perennial ryegrass, and the characteristic is days to ear emergence. And we have the yearly means for all our varieties from the trial. We have the comparable varieties and we have the candidate varieties for one year. We have it for two years. And in the UK, we do it in three years. So we have three years. And we use this variety by year mean data to calculate an over year mean. <clears throat> now, take for instance, candidate C2, it has a mean of 73. We want to know if candidate C2 is distinct from the other varieties. There are no other varieties with a mean of 73, but there are some there with 74, 75 and so on. Is C2 different enough from these other varieties that we can declare it as distinct? Well, for that, we need to calculate the COI D uh, criterion. So the first thing we do is we take all of our data and we do an analysis of variance. And from this, we get the variety by year mean square. You can see it here. Now, there's an important thing here, and that is the degrees of freedom. I will refer to that again in a moment. So we have 26 degrees of freedom for this example case. Now we use this information from the analysis of variance to calculate the COID criterion. We have a formula, there's the formula, and we just drop in the information from the analysis of variance into that formula. Now the COID criterion is in fact just the least significant difference, which I'm sure you will be familiar with. And uh, so there it is, we have the variety by years mean square, the number of years, the square root of two and a t value, and we end up with a value of 3.6. Now, 3.6, the COID criterion is the smallest difference necessary for distinctness. So back to our candidate with its mean of 73, any other variety that has a mean that is less than 3.6 days from 73 is not distinct from C2. So if we look at our other varieties, we will see that R4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, their means are not more than 3.6 days different than 73, so they are not distinct, but the other varieties are distinct from C2. Now, as I say, this is just one characteristic. We would look at other characteristics, and all being well, we will find other characteristics where these varieties are four, five, six, seven, and eight are distinct from C2, but for this one characteristic, they are not. Now, so we have, with COID, we're comparing variety means, and that is important. So that's the issue of the distinctness testing. There are a few issues with COID that it's worth knowing about. Firstly, we need enough varieties. We need enough varieties so that there are at least 10 degrees of freedom 
and ideally 20 degrees of freedom for the variety by year's mean square. Now, if we don't have enough varieties, we may be able to use a method called long-term COI-D instead. Secondly, we can adjust or improve the analysis using a technique called MJRA. We can do this when the range of expression of a characteristic differs from year to year. Say you have a large expression range in one year and a small expression range in another year, we can improve the analysis using MJRA. And thirdly, we can also adjust or improve the analysis when the varieties are grouped in trial. Now, all of these issues are discussed in TGP8, so if you want to know more, look there. Now, that's all I want to say on COI-D. We'll now turn to COI-U, which is for uniformity testing. And again, we're still looking at perennial ryegrass, and our characteristic is days-to-ear emergence. And here, we use both the means for our varieties and also the standard deviations. And we have data for all the comparable varieties, but I'm only looking at one candidate variety, just keep it simple. And the first thing that we do is that we convert our standard deviations into log standard deviations. We simply take these standard deviations, add one, and take the natural logarithm. So that's all this, these data are. The next thing we do is we adjust these log standard deviations for any possible relationship between the variability, the standard deviation, and the mean. And we do that by effectively so, sorry, I'm a bit slow on this. Uh, so we take our data and we effectively graph it. And we fit a moving average is one method, or as we're looking at in the UK, we use a spline to fit a relationship between the standard deviation and the mean. And that allows us to adjust the standard deviation to take out the effect of any relationship. So that gives us the adjusted standard deviations for that year. We do the same in years two and years three. And you can see here, there is a relationship. There seems to be a relationship between the standard deviation and the mean. The standard deviations seem to be getting less for the larger means. Now, this is a characteristic. It's time to ear emergence. So later in the season, we're getting less variable data. And we're adjusting our data for that. So Lo and behold, we get our adjusted standard deviations for all three years. And this is the data that we take forward with the rest of our COI-U analysis. So I'm moving to another slide, but here is our data again. And the first thing we do is we take our standard, adjusted standard deviations for the comparable uh, varieties and we do an analysis of variance on them. That gives us an estimate of variability and also a mean. And uh, we next calculate the mean for the candidate. Now, this is a measure, it's an average standard deviation for our candidate. So it's a measure of the uniformity of that candidate. And we're comparing it with an average standard deviation measure for the comparable varieties. And you can see that this standard, this uniformity measure for the candidate is larger than the uniformity for the comparable varieties. Does that mean that our candidate is not uniform? It is larger. To find out if it's not uniform, we have to calculate the COIU criterion. And to do that, we take our formula, so here's a formula, you'll find it in TGP8, and we simply slot in our values from the analysis of variance. So you can see here we have the mean of the uh, comparable varieties, we have a T value, we have the variability from the analysis of variance, we have three is the number of years, 11 is the number of comparable varieties, we work out our value and we get an answer of 2.42. 2.42 is our COIU criterion and it is the maximum allowable candidate uniformity. So in other words, 
any candidate with a uniformity of less than 2.42 is uniform. So our candidate here has a value of 2.19. So yes, it is uniform. And any other candidate, if its uniformity is less than 2.42, they too are uniform. If it's greater than 2.42, it's not uniform. So what we're doing here is we're comparing our candidate uniformity with, here is our reference variety uniformity plus a bit extra. So we are in essence comparing our candidate uniformities with the uniformity of the comparable varieties. And that is, as I described earlier, that is what we're doing with our uniformity testing. That's all I wanted to say on COIU and COID. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sally. We continue now with our next presenter, Ms. Christelle Laveau, who will introduce the Gaia methodology. Welcome everybody, I am Christelle Laveau from IT Department of Jeves and today we will talk about Gaia. As you know, the establishing of distinctness within the framework of registration or legal protection requires that candidate varieties are compared with each other and with the manifestly no varieties which made up the reference collection. In this uh, context, Gaia is used uh, to estimate a phenotypical distance between varieties, and so it helps uh, you, the US expert to take their decision and to improve the management of the reference collection. First, let's see the object of the Gaia software for each candidate variety. Firstly, is to detect very distinct varieties at the end of the first year of study. We call them Gaia distinct varieties. And secondly, is to detect varieties which need to be further compared to closed varieties. To sum up, if two varieties are declared Gaia distinct, it means the phenotypical distance is considered enough to not directly compare varieties in the field. Now, the principle of the software, as I said just before, it's to estimate the phenotypical distance between two varieties. This phenotypical distance is obtained by the addition of differences observed characteristic by characteristic. The particularity of Gaia is that each difference observed is weighting according to the intensity and to the reliability of each characteristic. Of course, all weightings are defined by the crop experts. Make it clear, I suggest now to examine uh, an example. You have here two different varieties, A and B. It's maize. Uh, they are noted for different characteristics, qualitative characteristics and quantitative transform into qualitative characteristics. If we, if we have a look to the um, if we have a look to the characteristic attitude of lateral branches, you see that the variety A is noted uh, seven and the variety B is noted uh, five. The difference is two, and the crop export decided to associate a weighting of two. Now, if we look at the characteristic length of USK, the difference is the same, it's two. But this time there is no weighting according to this associated to this difference because crop expert considered that the characteristic length of USK is less reliable than the characteristic attitude of lateral branches. Finally, the addition of weightings gives an estimation of the phenotypical distance between the two varieties A and B. That bring me to the rule of, for decision. We can distinguish two cases. The phenotypical distance between A and B is higher than the a threshold. This threshold is fixed by the crop expert. In this case, A and B are declared Gaia distinct. 
and are not directly compared in the second years. On the contrary, if the phenotypical distance between A and B is lower than the threshold, in this case, A and B are declared Gaia non-distinct and will be directly compared side by side in the second years. Now, let's see what types of characteristics are used in Gaia. You can have characteristics obtained from observations made in the field at the various phases of evolution of the plant, like uh, qualitative characteristics observed in one to nine scale or transformed into one to nine scale. You can also have quantitative characteristic merger or you can use characteristics obtained from observations made in laboratory, like electrophoretic characteristics, which are observed as presence or absence of each halal. That brings me to present the different types of comparison performed in the software, depending on the characteristics used. First of all, you have to define the distinction threshold. This is the value of the phenotypical distance from which you consider that two varieties are distinct. First, the qualitative analysis, which use qualitative characteristics. At the end of this first analysis, you have two pool of varieties. The pool of Gaia distinct varieties, this is varieties for which the phenotypical distance is higher than the threshold value, and the pool of Gaia non-distinct varieties for which the phenotypical distance is lower than the threshold value. For those varieties, you can choose to make no further analysis and the couple of Gaia non-distinct varieties are directly compared in the fields, or you can choose to go to the electrophoresis analysis, either to the quantitative analysis. If you choose the electrophoresis analysis, you have to define a phenotypical limit. This is the value of the phenotypical distance from which you consider that you can take into account the rating brings by electrophoresis according to your recommendation. It's just to not distinct varieties solely on the basis of electrophoresis. Varieties which are Gaia non distinct after the electrophoretic analysis can be compared directly in the field or pass on quantitative analysis. And finally, after at the end of the quantitative analysis, Gaia non-distinct varieties are directly compared in the field. Recently, we introduced the possibility to combine biomolecular distance with the phenotypical distance. In this case, of course, the electrophoresis analysis is not allowed by the software and two new limits are introduced. The phenotypical lim limit from which we can take into account the biomolecular distance. And the genotypic limit from which we can combine with the phenotypical distance. At the end, the objective is to reduce the number of varieties to compare in the field. Of course, the software option and analytical method change according to qualitative, electrophoretic, or quantitative characteristic. In conclusion, I uh, would like to present an example of uh, Gaia utilization for rapeseed in, uh, in Jeves. Um, each year, 50 to 60 varieties are studies. There is two locations for studies and two years of study per variety. All candidate varieties are compared with each other and with reference varieties. And the variety found close by Gaia, it means under the three soul of distinction, at the end of the first year of study are compared side by side in the field during the second year. 
And there is two different analyses with Gaia software, one for one group for lines and another group for hybrid. Here is the 11 qualitative characteristics used. On the slide, they are grouping according their reliability. The more reliable characteristic is, the more the weight associated to this different to the different is important. And uh, here is um, pictures to illustrate the, the weighting matrix. Uh, this is a matrix which stores the weighting for each characteristic. And um, you also have electrophoretic characteristics used and uh, also two quantitative characteristics. Now the option for comparison uh, for qualitative analysis is they use uh, two, loca two locations. Uh, they take uh, different options, but you, you will see this option if you uh, if you begin to use to use the software, you can uh, see it in detail. I'm not going to 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 detail uh, all uh, all options, but uh, I want to um, to show you uh, this graph. This graph shows uh, the evolution of the reference collection uh, and the number of candidate varieties in France on 50 years. 15 years, uh, I want to focus your attention on the increase of the theoretical comparison and the significant contribution of Gaia software to reduce the comparison in the second year of study. To sum up with Gaia, we have a significant reduction of the number of variety growing in the field in the second year. We focus the attention of DUS experts to close varieties. We establish the distinctness with a global phenotypic approach based on CPVO characteristic, and thereby we improve the organization of the field trials. That brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope uh, you are a little clear on Gaia software and you, uh, you want to, to discover more the, this software. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Lavo. Now we continue on to our next presenter, Mr. Thomas Drobeck from Germany, who's going to speak about integrating statistical methods and techniques into software. So, Thomas, you have the floor. Thank you. Th thank you, Leontino. Good morning, everybody. I'm Thomas from the Förder Plant Variety Office in Germany. I am responsible for the information technology in our office. The Federal Plant Variety Office in Germany is an independent federal authority under the jurisdiction of the Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture. I am pleased to be invited to contribute to this preparatory webinar for technical working parties. So the UPOF office asked, has asked me to report on the integration of statistical methods and techniques in software. This topic is a very broad field, so I would like to focus on three points. Data capture and storage of data, management of reference collection, we heard something from the France colleagues, and software for statistical analysis in the US examination, we heard some things from Sally in the UK. data capture and storage of data. In order to be able to record and evaluate test data in a controlled manner, two points are very important. The data must be structured and converted into an electronic form. Data for measurements and visually assessed characteristics should be recorded electronically using a handheld computer, such, so, uh, such a data locker. They are transferred into an electronic form of tables in the personal computer. Following this, the data must be checked and analyzed 
after which the crop expert can produce the variety description. From the data capture in the field to the production of the variety description, the crop experts are responsible for the correctness and the security of the data. At the first step, you, you can see a structure plan um, from our um, field station in Nossen. As a first step, the crop expert should establish the plan of the field trial with information about the varieties in the US trial. All this information is necessary for construction a field plan, for printing field labels for each plot of ore, and for other steps in the US procedure. The table shows an example from Germany. So you can see the crop, winter wheat, the year is important. The location, if you have more than one, the, the characteristics, the application, and the variety number in the database. Also the plot number and the number of the plant. Why we use data loggers? The advantage of data loggers are the elimination of handwritten field books, the possibility to check in the range of data using predefined minimum and maximum, the possibility to checking certain plausibility criteria, e.g. characteristic A must always be greater than characteristic B, and transfer the field plan from the PC to the data logger instead of using handwritten field books. Data capture and data logger. It is important uh, to difference between zero and missing. To distinguish between zero and missing, it is important to use a definite code for missing value. Zero, zero is generally not the method of choice for coding of missing values. In particular, for counts, it is not appropriate to give to count zero to code zero and missing count the same code zero. A zero count might be used, for example, for non-flowering plants. The cause of missing value might be 40 plants. Clearly, the same coding would lead to incorrect results. You can see it here in the column two, the plant three, the um, zero is not correct, then you see the average is six. And the, co correct, the correct results for the average number of flower is eight. See it here in the column three. For, for plant three, we have a missing value, so we have the average eight. Depending on the software, special kinds of codes are used, e.g. blank, dot, star, or other. Using the figure zero for missing values instead of code may lead to a wrong calculation of the average. My second point, the management of reference collection. The main challenge is the identification of varieties in the reference collections to be included in the growing tiles. We have different methods. So we, we heard from the friends, colleagues, the Gaia method um, described in TWC stroke 25 and uh, uh, stroke 13, and the select method from Germany, TWC stroke 24 stroke 8. The GAIAM software package is developed and provide free of charge in English and French from the French from, from the French colleagues. The select method was developed by experts from Germany. So the select methodology is implemented in our DOS database. There is no separate software which could be offered to other sources. The 
useful, useful characteristics for inclusion in these methods should be identified according to the following criteria. Low level of variation over years, high level of variation between varieties, and also important is the time of observation because of the short period between harvest and sowing in winter trials, observation of harvest seeds are not included in our method. I realized that my presentation is a little bit too long, so I will skip these two slides. And I come to the third point, software for statistical analysis in the US examination. The UPOF members use different but comparable programs for the statistical evaluation of data. Sally Watson from UK and her colleagues have been developing such a program for many years. Since 2010, the dust for Windows software can be also used by other group of members. Germany and France use the software SAS, written by a German expert from its, for its statistical evaluation. The program routines access the test data collected in, it, in the field and stored in our database. And other group of members use the new software package R. This is an open software product, or like China, they develop their own evaluation system based on the Pascal programming language. The dust, um, Sally told about uh, the program. If a UPOF member does not yet have its own evaluation system, we can recommend the use of Dust for Windows. The Dust for Windows software allows many kinds of analysis. They include the core analysis, we heard it, and a wide range of multivariate analysis. These analysis reflect the history of the development of statistical approaches in DUS testing, a history written, driven by the need of valid approaches and efficient use of data. This history is documented in the TWC working documents. You can see some on TWC stroke 198 or TWC stroke 27 stroke 9 or other documents. The Germany and France use the software package SAS. The DOS tests are performing according to the UPOF technical guidelines. The CPO technical protocols or national guidelines. An important point for the international harmonization are characteristics and way of description. Number of plants to be grown and to be observed per variety number of growing cycles, the tolerance level of, for the assessment of uniformity, and other. Finally, I hope you can see it. Finally, uh, a reference to the document IMF stroke 16. There you will find a list of exchangeable software, including contact information of colleagues which are responsible for the software. And the second, the document IMF stroke 22 provides information on software and equipment that is used by UPOF members for the purpose of plant variety protection. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thomas, and thanks for reminding our colleagues that we have made many of these softwares available on the UPOV website. Now, we complete the introductory part of our webinar with the presentations, and we will continue now with the panel discussion. At this point, I'd like to invite all the presenters to come on stage. Please, could you switch on your, your cameras? And we're going to proceed now to the panel discussion. 
we would like to invite first for the panel discussion Mr. Yoshiyuki Ono from Japan. Mr. Ono, I will pass the mouse over to you. Please, Mr. Uh, ono, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your, uh, inviting the, uh, this session uh, to share the Japanese uh, experience. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yoshiyuki Ono uh, from Japanese PVP office. Uh, I am responsible for uh, management of the US examination and uh, international cooperation in the US technical aspect. So today, I would like to make a short present presentation on uh, data uh, processing uh, techniques in the US examination uh, in Japan briefly. So here, uh, today's contents, uh, short explanation on the Japanese methods for assessment table for producing variety descriptions, uh, uh, which is related to is TWC slash 35 slash 12. So uh, purpose of our uh, note setting, so uh, IBOF uh, general introduction explains uh, 4.3, states of uh, expression of characteristics, uh, purpose of description, uh, wording of each state is attributed a numerical note, where appropriate uh, example varieties are provided in the uh, test guideline uh, to clarify the states of expression of the uh, characteristic. Uh, uh, here we have the uh, uh, assessment of the uh, distinctness. Uh, EVO uh, document TGP9 uh, Examining distinctness explains uh, as followings. Uh, uh, we, here we have the uh, uh, three approaches for the access, assessing uh, distinctness. Uh, first one is side by side visual comparison. Uh, second one is assessment by note, uh, single variety records. Third one is uh, statistical analysis uh, of uh, growing trial data. So uh, our noting, note setting is a necessary process uh, B, a, a assessment by a notes, single variety records in Japan. So uh, here we have the Japanese method uh, fundamental assessment table system uh, that called the uh, FAT system. Uh, According to the EPOF document, uh, TWC slash uh, 35 slash 12, uh, the first, uh, the measures data for the QN quantitative characteristic in the US growing trial are transformed to numerical nodes based on the assessment table. So we have accumulated uh, measured data from long standing DUS growing trials, which have been carried out under the same place uh, sh uh, sh similar circumstances and the uh, same uh, condition for the uh, crop growing. Second one is under the these circumstances, uh, the uh, fundamental assessment table, FAT, are uh, developed by uh, these accumulated measured data of the example variety. Uh, the FAT is uh, collected by growing degree calculated by a comparison with a current year's measured data, example of variety. So here we have the assessment table. Uh, assessment table had been work, working to the, transform measured data into numerical node in the US test. Uh, each node was allocated range by, range by their measured data of example varieties. 
here we have the uh, example variety A and example variety B. So uh, as a growing trial, uh, these uh, uh, example varieties have been affected by a variety climate situation or uh, other environmental elements. Uh, their actual measured data for QN characteristics have a tendency of uh, fluctuation in some extent. So uh, we uh, consider that uh, to keep the uh, evaluation uh, unchanging every, uh, the assessment table had been improved uh, based on the uh, accumulated measured data of the example variety. Here we have the explanation on the uh, fundamental assessment table, FAT system. So uh, FAT is developed by the more than 10 years averages as trial mean of the uh, data of the uh, example varieties, which are allocated uh, median of the uh, range of the node. The following table is set by uh, 10 years uh, average, or average of the example varieties. Uh, for example, we have the uh, uh, example variety A uh, in the node 3. Uh, 10 years average is 55 millimeter. Uh, we set up to the uh, 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 range of the node 3. Uh, so example varieties become the uh, median. And also uh, uh, variety B. It's the same. So uh, current trial data uh, should always be assessed by a performing fundamental assessment table uh, to uh, current assessment table. So I'd like to explain the uh, transforming current assessment table uh, we call the CAT. The transforming current assessment table uh, to transform the FAT from FAT to CAT, it is used growth score uh, followings. Uh, for example, uh, please look at here. Uh, 10 years average uh, as trial mean of the length, uh, leaf, leaf length is 55 millimeter uh, with example variety A. Uh, current, current year's mean of uh, leaf length is uh, 55, uh, 52 millimeter with example variety A. The current mean of the uh, 52 millimeter divided by trial mean of uh, 55 millimeter equal uh, 0 0.995 uh, equal, uh, we call the uh, growth, growth score. Uh, next step is a multiplying growth score. Uh, CAT is developed by a uh, multiplying growth score to FAT to adjust uh, current growth level. This is uh, uh, images of the transforming CAT. Uh, from FAT to CAT, that is a uh, uh, multiplied growth score, uh, 0 0.95. Uh, I would like to uh, explain the relevance of the FAT and CAT. Uh, relevant, uh, following uh, graph uh, explains the rela relation between the FAT and CAT. FAT is always uh, retained 1.0 uh, growth score, growth level. Uh, current trial growth score to be scored year by year. So uh, I also would like to uh, uh, explain the importance of the FAT system, uh, importance of the data accumulation. Uh, ideal situation for the FAT is stable trial mean uh, with uh, continuing data ac accumulation. Uh, convergent uh, variation by uh, continuing data accumulation. The third one is H. Uh, years CATs uh, contributes to develop precise FAT. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you. 
We'd like to pass the floor on to our next uh, panelist, Mr. Samuel Ogola from Kenya. Please, Samuel, you have the floor. Okay, thanks so much. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon uh, for everyone. Yeah, so on my side, I'll just share the experience we've been having uh, in the US in Kenya. So I'm the guy, I'm the person who most does the, the data for the US. Yeah, so in Kenya, we mostly use SAS, and we use uh, uh, SAS to analyze all the, the US data. So we had, we, we analyze it both for the quantitative for the quantitative and the quantitative data. Yeah, so 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 far we've been doing that, 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 that and and the and for the COU and the COID, uh, in, in most cases we use the COID to analyze data, but for the COU uh, for the informality in most cases we just uh, uh, use the the method. Oh, well, for the visual one, so so we don't mostly use the the software to look at the uniformity. Yeah, so so I mean that our 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 main focus or my main focus at the end is has mostly been on the on the quality and mostly the 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 the, the, the distinctness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that has been uh, my experience mostly. But, 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 but so so far we've been uh, also facing some tough questions as analysts. So one of them is is, is that we are always uh, being asked if if really the the method for analysis is enough for the DUS. So uh, so mostly uh, uh, we tried to use the 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 two methods both for the statistics and also. Uh, 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 the visual methods. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but so far we've been improving our DS process, and also for the last one year we've been trying to develop our reference collection. So we've been having uh, different trials for different collections, and 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 trying to see if we can even collect the reference from farmers, and then try uh, to use them uh, as our references for the DS trials. So we are trying to, to improve our, our DS process and see, and see how best we can improve our, 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 our process of analysis. Yeah, so in terms of, or, 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 so also in terms of the software, uh, we managed to acquire also the, the, the Gaia software, but we are yet to use uh, uh, Gaia. I know uh, there has not been, we, we, we have not been managed uh, to be sent on the on the Gaia software, but we but I think we would like to use uh, Gaia in the near future. So maybe the, the, uh, my colleagues from France can uh, try to see if there's a, a, a way some of us can be sent on the Gaia software. Yeah, so that's all from my side. Uh, thank you so much.